Okay, you've got your six cups of fruit filling, you've got your two cups of sugar, you got your half a cup of flour, or a quarter cup of flour. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me, Michelle. Okay, and then go ahead and add your additional items if you are one of those that needs the vanilla, or if you're one of those that need that apple pie spice. And then also add your liquor. If you want your booze in there, go ahead and add your booze too. So mix, mix up all your fruit filling. Yes. Okay, I see some wonderful pie filling coming up together out here. Yum. Oh, that amaretto peach. Can you just smell that amaretto? Oh, isn't it divine? Okay, how's my apple group doing over here? Woohoo! How is the strawberry group doing back there? Very delicious. Yum! And my peach group, I'm already smelling that. Woohoo! And my blueberry group, how are we doing? Absolutely great. Yay! And the cherry brandy group back there. Thumbs up. Perfect. Okay, we're going to move on to rolling out your crust. Okay. Um, you're going to divide your dough in half. Not yet. Wait till I show you. I'll model this first. Um, and I'm going to set this other half aside. And um, the two pieces of parchment, parchment paper I roll out my dough in between the two pieces of parchment paper. Parchment paper, it just really works with you. Um, and that way I can turn it around and I can flip it. And I use my body weight against the table to hold it. So as I roll, it kind of um, goes with me. Then I'm going to take half my dough and I'm going to lightly roll it into the flour that I've placed on the parchment paper. So I've got some flour on my dough. Then I gently press it down and then I'm going to take the other piece of, um, okay. So then I take the other piece of parchment paper and I'm going to place it um, on top of the dough. I kind of press down on the dough and what you want to do is you want to start in the middle and with short strokes and work it out. And then you'll turn the parchment paper around and you'll start and you'll push your rolling pin in short strokes and work it out until you get it to cover the, the width of your paper here and uh, about three inches in, okay? So we're going to start with that area and see um, how that all turns out for us. So I'll take my rolling pin and, okay. and then I just turn my parchment paper and I'm going to roll it out and then I'm going to turn it sideways and I want to try to keep it in a circle as best I can. Okay, so that when I pull this off, you guys can see that this here is my awesome crust. Yay. There you go. So I'm going to show you my technique that I've learned. From teaching the class in 2009, I realized that this becomes the hardest part of getting the pie uh, crust into the oven. So I have came up with a new concept. And that is you take a 10 inch foil casserole tin. You take this and they're four inches deep, 10 inches in diameter across. We're gonna place it face down. We're gonna put the um, crust over the top of this and lay it over. Then we're gonna take the oven and we're gonna put the two of them together and because this has little um, sides on it, that we can push it into the side wall of the inside of the oven. Easiest way I know how to tell you to get it into that oven. Um, but this is the technique I'm gonna show you because I know this will be a sure way of you getting in there safely. If the tears happen, um, and they may happen, if the tears happen on the wall as you're getting it in your oven and you patch it, um, there are a, it, there is a higher chance that it will have seepage when you when you pull it out of the oven. So we're going to try to um, show you how to get it in there without having um, breakage or or um, tears along the outside diameter of um, the crust. Okay. All right. Here's what we'll do: as we're going to take this 
tin and we're going to place it directly on this. Then we're going to flip your parchment paper and um, press over. Pull the parchment and we're going to take the parchment paper off. So now you have the crust overhanging um, on your, your tin here. Then Curtis is going to hand me the, the pipe, the pot, and I just kind of tilt it at an angle on the table. And i got to get my hands secure, okay? Um, and then I take this, you guys all see this, and I'm going to place it inside the Dutch oven. And then while my hand is still in there, I kind of gently squish it around and so that it adheres to the wall of the Dutch oven. Very nice. Thank you all. Like I said, that is the hardest part. And then you're going to pull your pieces up and make sure that you uh, are getting it secure and press it against the wall of the Dutch oven. Okay. Okay. See that? Okay, so that's how you're going to get it in the Dutch oven. So after you have placed your fruit filling inside of here, it's soft. Yeah. Um, you're just going to go along the top and you'll just cut going along it so you get an even cut. But do this after you put the filling in there. I don't have any filling to show you guys with. But How far above the filling? Yeah. Um, I would go at least an inch above the filling because you want the thing with the pie in the oven versus in the house oven is you know when you make your pies at home your upper crust goes underneath your bottom crust. It's just the opposite of that in the Dutch oven. Your, your bottom crust is going to come up over your top crust. Okay and when it comes up over your top crust then um, you're going to have to seal the two pieces together, the upper crust and the bottom crust together with some egg white wash, some uh, pastry wash. Okay, I think I better go ahead and show you how to do the upper crust so that, just a second, so that um, you guys can do both of them at the same time. Get your, your crust inside the oven like I just showed you how to do. And then um, what you need to do is You've got your upper crust rolled out as well. And we're doing the five different um, upper crust shapes. Um, one of them being the lattice, um, the lattice shape. Now my, my friend Terry Lewis that I told you about that wrote the cookbook, he's the one that found this for me in Salt Lake City. I have not been able to find these on the internet. I can't even tell you exactly the name. I think it's Mako, but what these are are pastry wheels. So this makes all of my uh, lattice strips the same size. Now, obviously on the chuck wagon, you can't use this. You just use a knife and you wouldn't even um, weave it. But I'm gonna show you real easy this, how to do this. So then you got these strips like this. You can see they're pretty strips. Um, and then what you would do is you would start with an X. So those of you that are doing the lattice crust at the tables, um, this is what you would do. You would start with an X, like so. And if you're going to weave in and out, um, then you actually could get four on here before you actually have to start um, your weaving. So then you put the other one on top and this one on top. So now you actually have to start your weave. So you would fold the one underneath up and then you would have to place the next one underneath it, fold this one back over. Now this is the one on this side that's under, I'm going to fold it up. If you need help, we've got lots of us that can get around to help you, okay? And this is, this is called the lattice. You guys see that? This is the lattice. And you would keep doing that and work yourself all the way out to the outside. So on this process, this is um, the process of getting the crust into the Dutch oven, getting the fruit filling in there, trimming it, and then putting the upper crust on, on the top, creating your upper crust, doing the egg white wash, and finishing your edges. And we'll be out and about helping you do all of that. Yes. How do you deal with the folds? Do you do anything? I
press the folds into as long as there's no tears on the outside. If it's on the inside, if you've got a fold on the inside, you're okay. Uh, we kind of experienced that where I had rolled out yesterday during competition. It was a little thinner on one side and I was concerned and but I didn't have to be so concerned because the tear wasn't on there was no tear on the outside that it just was a little thinner so I pressed some more dough on the inside. Um, but before we take it out there, I want to tell you that probably and hopefully about 3.30, come pick up your pies and we'll pull them out of the ovens. And after we pull them out of the ovens, we're going to display them on your uh, lid of your oven. And this is how this works. This is a trivet. This is actually a nice trivet. I love these trivets. Um, turn it, turn your trivet so that you can put your lid on top of it. And it's, and it's solid, then if you notice that your lid, your Dutch oven lids naturally have a dip in them. I don't know if some of you guys um, realize that, but when you're competitive cooking, it's important to get your food level and that it doesn't sink into that dip. So that's where these cardboard pieces come into play. You take a 10 inch circle on a 12, 12 inch diameter Dutch oven lid. You're going to place that circle right there in the middle, so now that creates a level surface. We're going to put a beautiful little do doily on top of it, and then we'll put your pie after it's pulled out of the oven. Um, you'll need, we did it yesterday with two, but that was a little scary. You really kind of need three people, two and a friend to help you pull these out of the oven and set this on top of your Dutch oven lid after the pie has cooled down. Then those strips, you'll just gently pull those strips out from underneath. So the only thing really left underneath your pie is that round parchment paper circle, which is, which is fine to leave it there, okay? So that's how what we're gonna attempt to do. Our guys, Curtis and Jim, are gonna take your ovens and um, cook them for you today. So if you are, uh, just wanna go ahead and carry them over there, it's a, actually right across here. And so they can get your oven started. It takes an hour and a half to cook a 12-inch Dutch oven and at least 30 to 45 minutes to let it cool down. Look at that. Isn't that Look at that. They should slip right out. There you go. There you go. Come on, step in here. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Calvin, what do you think of that? <laughs> That's great.